All right, good morning, good morning. God bless everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning in the name of the Lord. This is Apostle Cordero Dukes of Perfecting Life Church here in Augusta, Georgia. And I am ecstatic to be here with you this morning. Amen. Praise God. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. Hallelujah. God bless you all. So grateful for the power of the Lord, the work of the Lord this morning. And so we're believing God for, hallelujah, unusual things this morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you as you come in. Amen. Share this video. Tag a friend. Hallelujah. Let me know that you are here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Good morning, PLC, all of you. Amen. Coming in. Hallelujah. Good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. We'll let a few more people get in here. Hallelujah. Tag your favorite auntie, cousin, your worst enemy. Tag them all. Amen. We are in need of God's grace. Amen. And God's mercy. Good morning to you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Elder Lattimore, good morning. Prophetess Colbert, Pastor Nikki, Minister Oakman, Minister Asia, good morning to you all. Amen. Thank you for coming in. We believe in God for great and mighty things this morning. Hallelujah. We believe in the Lord that he'll do exceeding abundant above all that we could ask or think according to the power that's working in us. And hallelujah, we are believing the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. As you come in. Amen. As we come to the throne of grace this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. The throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, Paula Lewis. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Blessings of the Lord to you. Amen. As we come to the throne of grace this morning, we are ecstatic about what the Lord will say to us. Hallelujah. We are extremely excited about it. And I wanted to share this word with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get into a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify you. We praise you for your loving kindness. We praise you for your tender mercy. We praise you because you are the great I am. We praise you because you are omnipotent, Father. Hallelujah. You are omnipresent, Lord. You are all things. Hallelujah. And we glorify you today. Hallelujah. You're the creator of heaven and earth, Father. We magnify you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, because, Lord God, you have done all of these things on our behalf, Father. Lord God, we praise you right now as we come this morning to the throne of grace. Lord God, we come, Lord God, resting on and your assurance, Father, of what all that you will do for us, Father, is through your grace, is through your mercy. Hallelujah. It's through your love, your kindness. Thank you, Father. And we praise you this morning, God, that you will, Lord God, just flow out of, Father, as a river by your spirit on your people. Lord God, flow like a mighty river. Father, break demonic yokes, break bondages, uh, destroy demonic strongholds, Father. Father, we thank you that it is your anointing that destroys every yoke. Father, every yoke of sickness, disease, infirmity. Lord God, it's by your anointing, Lord God, that we are healed, we are delivered, we are set free. And Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we enter into the most holy place. We enter in, hallelujah, and approach your throne, Father, humbly yet boldly, Father, humbly yet confident, Father. Lord God, that when we come before your throne, Lord God, that you are faithful and just to hear us, Lord. You are faithful and just to touch us. You are faithful and just, hallelujah, to, to make a way. You are faithful and just to pour out your spirit, upon us today. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you are pouring out your spirit afresh and anew upon your people. God, I thank you. Yes, Lord. I thank you that you are renewing us, Lord, renewing our minds, renewing our spirit, renewing our inner man, renewing our, Lord, renew us in your word, renew us with fire, 
Renew us with fervor. Renew us with zeal. Renew us with anointing. Renew us with hope. Renew us, oh God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Renew us, oh God, and we praise you right now. Lord God, we thank you that refreshing comes from the time in your presence, Lord. Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. So, Father, I thank you that today will be a day of refreshing, Lord. Today will be a day of refreshing. Thank you, Father. Today will be a, a day of reset. Thank you, Father. Today will be a day, Father God. Hallelujah that we are, Lord God, mentally at peace, Lord. Emotionally, Father. Lord God, physically, Lord. Spiritually, Lord. Lord, that we'll be at peace, Father. That we'll be refreshed. That we'll be quickened. That we'll be made alive. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father. And let all of these things flow from your throne. Let all of these things flow from your throne. Let your presence, Lord, let your glory, let your power, let your strength, Father, let it all flow from your throne in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now you powers of darkness, every demonic spirit warring against the people of God today, we put you on notice. Hallelujah. We let you know your powers are broken through the authority of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will unmantle your strongholds and destroy your strongholds in the name of Jesus and that the people of God, everybody under the sound of my voice will be free in the name of Jesus. And Father, we glorify you and we praise your holy name in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The powers of darkness cannot hold the people of God in bondage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We declare it. We speak it. We decree it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Freedom. Amen. Strength. Joy. Breakthrough. Hope. Hallelujah. More than enough in Christ Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. I'm excited, as you can already tell, amen, about the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when the enemy buffets us and, you know, wages war against us and all those things, he thinks it's going to stop us. He thinks it's going to stop us from sharing the word of God, from preaching, amen, this perfected man, Christ Jesus. But he's a liar. He's a liar. Amen. We live the life now that we live, we live not of our own, but we live by the faith of the Son of God, the one who gave his life for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to, we're going to share the word of God every avenue, every opportunity we can. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't care how mad the enemy gets about that. We're going to, we're going to, amen, declare that incorruptible. Hallelujah. Word of God. That seed. Amen of the word of God. We're going to, we're going to sow seed. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to water that seed and we're going to believe God and watch God that he will give that increase. Amen. 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 Good morning to you all coming in. I think I saw, amen. Minister Jenny Dukes. Amen. Minister Nella. Hallelujah. Blessings of the Lord to you. Hallelujah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Mother Lattimore coming in. Amen. Triana and Brother Eddie. Hallelujah. Texas crew in the house. Uh, amen. Blessings to you all. Blessings, blessings. Glad to glad to have you all here this morning. Amen. Glad to have you all here this morning. Uh, the Lord has been talking to me and been dealing with me uh, the last day or so about this and um, just really been in my spirit. And I've been praying through it. And, and I believe it's a place of victory for the body of Christ, amen, and for the household of faith. And so I want to give this to you, amen, the body of Christ at large, hallelujah, amen. I want to give it to you because uh, it is a place of victory and it is a place of hope, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 14, through verse number 16. We're going to focus on those uh, scriptures at the moment and then we'll, we'll, we'll venture off some more. Amen. If you would, share this video on your page. Tag a friend, family member, enemy, loved one. It don't matter. Tag somebody so they can hear the incorruptible word of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter number four. 
verses 14 through 16. Hebrews chapter number four. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. For the Lord is wonderful. Hebrews chapter number four. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Amen. Hebrews chapter number four. All right. Let's look at the word of God. As you saw the topic, amen, uh, today, the throne of grace, the throne of grace. Um, we pray, amen, to the throne of grace. Uh, and I know old, old time in churches know about the throne of grace. Amen. We come to the throne of grace, amen, when we pray and we seek God and we seek the God of heaven and earth. Amen. His name is Jesus Christ, Jehovah. Amen. And uh, Elohim. Hallelujah. Uh, and he has so many names, ultimately being Jesus the Christ, God in the flesh. Uh, good morning, uh, Sister Antoinette. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 14. Let me read this uh, in your hearing. The Bible says, seeing now seeing then that we have a great high priest, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Who is he? Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we were. You see that? Yet he was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain favor and find grace to help in the time of need. That's it. Those three scriptures, super powerful. As God began to lead me to pray through those, um, and he began to speak to me about this throne and this throne of grace, Hallelujah. And this high priest that we have, he says, seeing then, you've got to see, see then that we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about that for a moment. We understand, even as I ministered on last Sunday out of Hebrews chapter number nine, we understand that high priest were those of the Aaronic uh, family, Aaronic priesthood, hallelujah. They were those that were set aside, amen, to go into and to administer the blood and the sacrifice, amen, specifically once per year into the most holy place to uh, uh, um, atone for the sins of the people, to atone not only for the sins of the people, but also for their own sin. And so then the, the Aaronic priesthood, an Aaronic priest, Aaron being the first, was a man of uh, uh, sinners, was those that fell short of the grace and glory of God. And, and we see that those men who were uh, Aaronic priests and high priests, they had specific duties that they would do as they go in and administer this blood upon the the uh, the Ark of the Covenant, upon the mercy seat. Glory to God as they minister this blood upon the mercy seat, uh, praying for forgiveness, interceding uh, for the sins of themselves and for the people to be washed and to be forgiven. And God would either accept or not accept that sacrifice based on, amen, based on whether or not, amen, it was acceptable, whether or not it was acceptable. Remember, any sacrifice that is brought before the living God must be a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice. It must be a sacrifice that, amen, is without spot, without blemish, without defect. Everything that was brought before a God had to be perfect. It had to be as earthly perfect as it could be in order for God to accept it and in order for it to be pleasing unto the Lord. So then these high priests would, amen, would, would find a lamb 
or a, a dove or a bullock or so forth, but for atonement, they found the lamb. And they would bring that lamb, amen, and make sure, they would examine that lamb to make sure that that animal was pure from an outward appearance, that he had no he had no defect, he had no flaw, he had no broken uh, bones, he had no mixed hair. He, he was pure, he was pure through and through, amen, so that God would what? Would be pleased with the sacrifice that was being brought forth. And be, if God was pleased, then God would release the people from their sins for one year. And every year, they had to bring back, amen, more sacrifice every year to atone for their sins. Now, thank God, the Bible declares to us, we must see now that we have a great high priest. We have a different high priest than that of the Aaronic, Aaronic priesthood. That of the priesthood of, of Aaron and his lineage, Amen. Were men that were flawed, men with defect, men with issues and, and situations and circumstances and had sin in them. They were born into sin and shaping in iniquity. However, amen. However, we now have a high priest that, amen. Although, yes, he is very much man, he is very much man, he has taken on. Our image, our likeness, the nature of man, amen, the likeness of man, amen, he yet was without sin, which is so important for us to understand that the high priest now that we have is one without sin, meaning that he pleases God in every way. Somebody say amen. He pleases God in every single way. In every single way. He is the propitiation for our sins. He is the one, glory to God, that, that atones, hallelujah, that atones for our sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is the one that atones for our sin. The Bible says in Romans, in Romans chapter 3, verse number 25, the Bible says, whom God have set forth to be a, a, a propitiation, meaning he's the one who shed his blood. He's the one, glory to God, that pleases the Father in every way for you and I. Now, he did what we were incapable of doing. Isn't that powerful? Jesus did what you and I uh, are still incapable of doing in our flesh and in our own strength. Jesus came and walked this life in flesh and blood like you and I, in a human suit, in a flesh body, amen, with, with the temptations of lust, with the temptations of darkness, with the temptations for deceit, with the temptations to lie, with the temptations to steal, with the temptations, amen, for all of these things, Jesus Christ was tempted. Do I have a witness? Jesus Christ was tempted. Now, this is so powerful for us because what this means for us is that we can approach his throne. And, I, and we're going to talk about that. Yes, absolutely. He is the acceptable sacrifice. Amen. And I like to say he's the perfect sacrifice. He's the perfect man. He's the perfect God man. He's the one that walked this thing out and lived the life in the fear of the Lord perfectly. And God deemed him as one that was what? That was, this is the one that I'm going to approve. And God approved Jesus because he, he honored God, because he walked this thing out in such a way that God would be pleased with him. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in Romans, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to put this out here so that you can be blessed. And I'm going to sing you on your way, okay? The Bible says in the book of Romans, he says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, hallelujah, through faith. That propitiation means that he now is the one, glory to God, he is the one, hallelujah, that God has chosen. He is the one that God has declared. He is the one that God has set forth, amen, to eradicate, to eradicate. 
It is, is the atoning victim. He's the atoning victim. That word propitiation means atoning victim. He's the mercy seat. He's the place of my mercy. Oh, praise God. Anybody need mercy? See, mercy is I don't deserve for somebody to show me kindness. I don't deserve to necessarily be forgiven, but he is my place of mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Man, I ain't done everything right. I ain't done everything right today. Come on, somebody. But Jesus Christ is my mercy seat. He is my mercy seat. I can fall on him. I can, I can, I can rest in him. I can pull on his mercy. I can hold on to the horns of that altar and receive the mercy of God and receive the release from my sin and the release from my captivity and the release from my, come on, from my struggle and from my hurt and from my pain and from my restriction and from my bondage and from the, the, the cares of the world. I can be released through the mercy seat that Jesus Christ is. That mercy seat that was in that tabernacle that Moses built, made out of solid gold, made out of gold, come on, representing the deity of God, representing the nature of God, Jesus Christ has become my mercy seat and I can rest on him, I can pull on him, I can come to him in the time of need and he what? He will be right there. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. He is my mercy seat. He's the atoning victim. Even though, even though, he did not do anything to deserve to die on the cross. He didn't do anything to deserve to die a criminal's death, right? He didn't do anything to deserve that. Yet and still, he what? He became the atoning victim. He became the one, amen, glory to God, that the Father would, would release his wrath upon because he took on the sins of the world. And although he took on the sins of the world, my God, how powerful is it, amen, that the Father will release his wrath upon him. Glory to God, Jesus had walked in such a way that the Father could not leave him in death. The Father could not leave him in hell. The Father would have to raise him up because Jesus pleased the Father in every, in every way. We have not just a high priest, but we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest. Come on. He is that one that appeases the father. Listen, the, the, the animal sacrifices that were given, it only appeased God for a certain period of time. It only spoke for a year. It only spoke temporarily on their behalf. And they found themselves back in the same place again. It found themselves back in the same situation again. My God, they found themselves in that same rut again, having to sacrifice for sin over and over and over again. And guess what? Although... They sacrifice on, uh, for sin over and over and over again, year after year after year. It never purified their conscience. It never washed their inner man. It never cleansed their conscience from dead works. It never cleansed their conscience from sin and corruption. Thank God that we have a high priest that put his blood on the altar in the heavenly places and, 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 and has washed not only our outer man, but he has purified our conscience from dead works. He has purified our inner man. He washed our mind. He's washing my soul. He's cleansing my emotion. He's delivering my emotions, my mind, my intellect, my will, my desires. Come on, somebody. He's purifying me through and through. Yes, he is the ultimate sacrifice. And he has pleased the Father in every single way. Man, I feel like running and shouting. Our oh, glory to God. Jesus Christ is the great high priest. And he's the great high priest that has put his own blood on the altar. 
his own blood, his own life on the altar. This was no, this was not cute by any means. I want you to understand what Jesus did for us is not cute by any means. It is, it is very violent. It is very painful. It is very, it is, it is uh, my God, it is a blood, it's a bloody act. It is a bloody act, people of God. And thank God for the bloody act of Jesus. Thank God for the bloody work of Jesus. Because why? Now, 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 through his blood, you and I are able to enter in. Hallelujah. You and I are able to enter in. What do you mean I'm able to enter in? That means I've gotten access. Because Jesus, according to according to <clears throat> Romans 20, uh, 325, uh, because Jesus is now uh, uh, God presented Jesus as the as the appeasement. God presented Jesus as the appeasement for our sin, as the mercy seat through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because he in his restraint, God passed over sins previously committed. See, God says, now I'm going to wash those sins away. See, God presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be righteous and declare righteous. Hallelujah. The ones who have faith in Christ. If you believe what I'm saying to you today, all you got to do is believe what I'm saying to you today. If you say, Father, I believe that Jesus is uh, uh, um, the, the price for my sin. Jesus paid the price. Jesus is my propitiation. Jesus is my way out. Jesus is my, my great high priest. If you believe that, your life can change. Come on. Your life will turn around. Your situation will get better. You will, come on, you will be raised from, from death into life. You'll be raised from hell into heaven. You'll be raised, come on, from sin into righteousness. You'll be raised from sickness into health and healing. You'll be raised up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. From in, 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 uh, uh, from mortality to in, immortality, from corruption to incorruption, all because you believe that God sent Jesus as your propitiation. That's my release. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. Now, now let's go back. We got to go back to Hebrews. And I'm trying to get on through this so you can go about your day. Now, I want you to go rejoice in the day. I want you to go giving God the praise today. I want you to go giving God the glory and honor today. I want you to go about your day, hallelujah, shouting and praising God because why you have, amen, a mediator in heaven. You have a mediator in heaven that's praying on your behalf, that's interceding on your behalf, hallelujah, that's declaring over your life. He said to Peter, he said, Peter, that Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I pray for you. Come on, you got an intercessor praying on your behalf. You got you got the ultimate intercessor. He has put his blood on the altar. He's he's provided mercy and he's provided grace just for you. Yes, he has. Now, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 4 so we can finish this up. Seeing now that we have a great high priest. Hallelujah. We have a great high priest. My God. We have a high priest. Hallelujah. Now, now that word great, he says, I, you got a high priest. He's large. He's magnificent. He's exceeding. Come on. He's mighty. He is, he is, uh, he is great. He is, he's, he's loud. He's big. He's large. He's magnificent. For you have a great high priest. He is above all other high priests. He's above all other high priests. Glory to the name of the Lord. He's above all other. And he's a high priest. He didn't come out of Aaron. He came out of Judah. Hallelujah, somebody. He came out of Judah. He came out, hallelujah, a place of praise. He came out, glory to God. He came out of Judah. He's a high priest, not after the first order, but he's after a new and living order. 
Huh? That's in, that's in the book of Hebrews too. Hebrews chapter number six, I believe it is. He's he's now or, or seven. He's now he is a high priest, not after the old order, but after a new order. I want you to see he came to set up a brand new order. I'm living in a new order. Hallelujah. I'm living in a new order. Come on. Every day, every day, every day, we must recognize we're living in a new order. Every day, every day we must recognize we are living in a new order. I'm living in a new kingdom. I'm living in a, of a new world. I have been born of a different world. I have been born of a new world. I have been born out of heaven. Amen. Apostle OJ, good morning, sir. Glad to see you, my brother. I have been born of a new world. I've been born out of heaven. And I've been born of a different kind. My first birth. Let me drink me some of this coffee. My first birth was, was I was born in the sin. Just like uh, David was. And, and he said it in Psalms 51, I believe. He said in sin that my mother conceived me. And in Nick, I was born in the city and shaping in iniquity. And in sin, my mother did conceive me. Come on, somebody. I was born through the matrix of sin. I was born through the canal of sin. I was sinful. I was a sinful man. Come on, somebody. And what now? I, I have been born again of a new order. But that's why you got to be born again. That's why you got to be born again. Come on, somebody. That's exactly why you got to be born again. The Bible says in, in, in uh, um, 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed. I hadn't been born again into sin, but I've been born again of an incorruptible seed. There's an incorruptible seed on the inside of me. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Come on. How many people know that you are in this world, you walking around, you doing your job, you going to work, you living your life and all that. But what? I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I've been sitting in this world to influence this world and to take dominion over this world. And do I have any witnesses? I've been sitting here to take dominion. I've been sitting here to take authority. I've been sitting here to come on the name stuff and decree stuff from heaven. I've been sitting here to, to, to be an instrument Amen. Of God's divine will in the earth. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I've come, I've come as an instrument of God to, to bring forth the power and the presence of God into this earth realm. Hallelujah. I came to influence the earth. I came to let heaven shine through me. I came, come on, somebody, to let the work of Christ be manifested in me. Let me keep going. Seeing now we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Glory to God. The Bible declares in the book of Romans. No, in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number four. The Bible declares in Ephesians chapter number four that Jesus, uh, uh, he first what? He first descended into the lower parts of hell. Come on. He first descended Amen. But now he has what ascended into the heavens. So the Bible says here that he now has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast. Let us hold fast our profession. Are you holding fast to your profession? Are you holding fast to what you say? Are you professing this thing? Come on, I told you every day we got to begin to recognize that I'm of a different world, that I have authority and power, that I'm born of heaven, that I'm born of God. Hallelujah. I, I am, I am in, yes, I'm in the bloodline of God. I'm, I'm in, I'm, uh, come on, I'm born of him. Hallelujah. Holl I'm born of him. I'm born of him. Glory to God. He is my God. He is my father. I, I'm, I'm his son. Now, look. He says, you must hold fast that profession. Come hell or high water, hold fast your, the confession of your faith. Don't let nothing move you from that position. I know, listen, if you've been in these situations like me, the warfare has been great. The mental assault has been great. The emotional attacks have been great. 
the 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 onslaught from the enemy. Yes, all of that has been great. Uh, 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 your finances may be looking funny. You might be struggling in your health. You might be going through some things. Your family might be tore up. All of these things, I understand people of God. And the reason I understand because I got them going on in my own life. And guess who else understands? The great high priest understands. The Bible says he has experienced your infirmity. He has experienced, I got something in my beard. Hmm. Let me make sure that beard stay clean. Now. He says he understands what you are going through. He understands. And this is why we must hold fast the profession of our faith. Be, yes, be steadfast in it. When the, when the, when the, when the, when the warfare comes, when the battle is on, when, when you've been thrown into the fire, when you've been thrown into the fiery furnace, like the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shack Rat, and the Billy Goat, when, when, when you get thrown into the fire, I know it's a Bendigo, when you get thrown into the fire, come on, hold fast the confession of your faith. When you get thrown into the lion's den, Hold fast the confession of this great high priest. When you get thrown into, into the pit like uh, uh, Joseph was, hold fast the confession of your faith. When the people, people of God, preachers of God, pastors, leaders, elders, when the people frustrate you and, and, and don't want to obey what God is saying and pull against you, hold fast the confession of of your faith. When family life is going awry, hold fast the confession of your faith. And the Bible says it like this. When you've done all you can, stand. Come on. After you've done everything that you can do, stand and trust God. Stand in faith. Grab a hold to the horns of the altar and believe God. Hey, God, I'm weak. God, I'm struggling. God, I'm hurting. God, this is too much. Hold fast to the horns of the altar. And I believe and I know that God will bring you out. God will bring you out. Yes, hold fast. Don't let anything break your faith. Don't let anything turn you away. Don't let anything, amen, cause you to charge God. Hallelujah. Now, let me keep, let me, I, I'm on, okay, we're on verse 15 now. We're done with 14. Let's go to 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with, our, with the feelings of our infirmities. This high priest Jesus, because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, let me run over there real quick so you can have that in your spirit. Hebrews chapter number 2. Now, I know this is a lot. But I want you to take this video and I want you to go back and watch it again and let it minister to you and let God do his thing on the inside of you, right? Because there's so much in this uh, and I can't even touch it all. I can't even touch it all. But I, I'm just giving you a high level overview of what's going on here. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 14. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood. Look, your children are partakers of your flesh and blood. Your children, amen, they are partakers of your flesh and blood. They look like you. They talk like you. They act like you. They walk like you. They do all them things like they chew just like you and just like they mama or they dad. They, they just like you. I know. Praise God. Us children might not want to hear that. But just like your parents. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible declares children are partakers of flesh and blood. Prophetess Willis, God bless you. Tasha Davis, God bless you. If I missed anybody, God bless you for coming in. He says, for as much did our children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus, he himself also likewise took part of the same. He took part of the flesh and blood that you and I are living in on a daily basis. He took part of that same flesh and blood. Huh? He took part of that same flesh and blood. Yes, he did. Now, look at this. He took part of the same blood, uh, 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 flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Oh, you can the devil can hang it up. Jesus already won this battle. Jesus already rendered him useless and powerless. 
Come on, Jesus already took care of him. Jesus already took care of that, that, that foe, that enemy. Come on, he already took care of that situation, that circumstance. But Jesus became flesh and blood so that he can partake of our experience. He can walk it out in our in our in our flesh like body. Amen. And not only that, but he overcame. That's the powerful thing. Now look, verse 15, he says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with our infirmities. Amen. With the feeling of our infirmities. What are you going through? What infirmities are you going through? As I was praying yesterday, I was praying about some infirmities. I was praying about some infirmities that was going on. And the Lord dropped this word in my spirit. He dropped the throne of grace. And I went, I found the scripture and I began to pray through these scriptures. What infirmities do you have in your life? What infirmities are you experiencing? Huh? What infer what weaknesses? Let me say it in a different way. What weaknesses are you experiencing? What weaknesses do you have in your life, in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, on your job, with your children, with your spouse, in the realm of your flesh? What infirmities do you have? Because the Bible says disease, infirmity, disease, frailty, uh, uh, mortality. What mor morally, uh, moral infirmities do you have? Sicknesses, disease, weakness. Huh? Uh, uh, you need strength in some areas. Whatever infirmities you have, I want you to know that Jesus is acquainted with your infirmities. I want you to know that Jesus is acquainted with your infirmities. Jesus is acquainted. He, he knows your infirmities. And not only does he knows it, but he overcame your infirmities on your behalf. Hallelujah. And whatever he went through is already applied to me. Come on, somebody. He knows what I'm going through. And not only does he knows, but he overcame in those areas, amen, for me. I can, I can take what Jesus did and it can be applied to my account. You can take what Jesus did on your behalf and apply it to your account. As a matter of fact, that's what God has already done. He says now, he says that he, God chose Jesus as our propitiation. He chose Jesus as the one, amen, to make us righteous. He chose Jesus as the one to make us holy. So the Bible says he knows your infirmity. Come on, how many of us get caught up in the infirmity? Tell the truth. Yeah, me. How many of us get caught up in the infirmity? How many of us get blinded by the disease? How many of us get blinded by the trial? How many of us get blinded by the circumstance? How many of us get blinded by the situation? How many of us get blinded by the lack of hope? How many of us get blinded by, by, by come on, my husband ain't acting right. My wife not acting right. Shoot, pastor, I ain't even got no husband. I want one. How, come on, I ain't even got a wife. I want one. I ain't even got children. I'm believing for children. I can't have them. Whatever the situation may be, we get blinded by the infirmity. We get blinded by the circumstance. But there is one that is acquainted with your infirmity and acquainted with your circumstance. Not only is he acquainted, but he wants you to know that he's done the work in such a way that you now have the ability to overcome that infirmity. He's going, come on, the Bible says in every situation, the Lord has provided what? A way of escape. In every situation, the Lord has provided a way of escape. Hallelujah. The Lord has provided my way out. He's provided my deliverance. He's provided my freedom. He's provided my rescue. You find yourself in the lion's den. And the Lord has already made a way of victory for you. You find yourself in the, in the, in the, in the pit. God has already made the palace available for you. You find yourself in the fiery furnace. Come on, somebody. And they turn the heat up. Seems like seven times hotter. Come on. Glory to God. I want you to know that the Lord is already walking with you 
in the midst of the furnace. Hallelujah. I want you to know you find yourself in a situation or circumstance because he knows your infirmities. Come on, you can go to God and say, God, I'm going through this pain. I'm going through this ache. I'm going through this turmoil. I'm going through this situation. Father, I thank you now. I come to the throne of grace. Now, all of this sets up the point. Coming to the throne of grace. Here we are. Here we are. We finally here. We finally here. Here we are. Coming to the throne of grace. Watch this. Watch this now. And the Bible says he was tempted in, a, but in all points, all points, in all points, tempted like we are, yet he was without sin. Thank God he didn't sin. Thank God he didn't dishonor God. Thank God that he kept, amen, he kept, he held on to the faith. Thank God he continued to obey God. Hallelujah, even unto death. Now look, verse 16, Hebrews 4, 16, look at this. The Bible says, now, 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 look. Let us therefore come boldly. Because of verse 14 and 15, the great high priest, shedding of his blood, holding fast the confession of our faith. He has our infirmity. He knows our infirmity. He's acquainted with our infirmity. He suffered our infirmities. Listen, because of this, the Bible says that you can come boldly before what? The throne of grace. Therefore, let us come boldly. Boldly. B-O-L-D-L-Y. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Come boldly. That word boldly. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. What does that mean? That means come confidently. The Amplified Version says, come without fear. Come, let us draw, let us draw then fearlessly. Not, not throwing away the fear of the Lord, because we need the fear of the Lord. We're talking about, I don't have to be afraid to come to the throne of grace. See, if I came before under the ironic priesthood, I would die because I was a sinner. Come on, I would die. And, and if you try to come any other way than through Jesus, then you will not be accepted. But I want you to see now, he says, let us come fearlessly and confidently. I'm able to come to God with confidence. I'm able to go to my father with confidence, knowing that my father, he loves me. Knowing that my father, he cares for me. Knowing that he is acquainted with my sorrows and my grief. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse number four and verse number five, for he was what? He was acquainted with our sorrows and grief. We esteemed him stricken of God and smitten of men. You see what I'm saying? All of that was for me, but he took it on. Then the Bible says, for he what was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement for my peace was upon him. And with what? With his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, by his stripes, I am healed. Glory be to God. Now, he says, let us therefore come boldly uh, with assurance. With assurance. You ain't got to come to God guessing. All right. Everybody out there praying for something. If you praying for something, don't guess. Be assured that God is faithful and God is able to do what you have asked of him. Now, look now, the Bible says come boldly. I'm bringing it to a close. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. This throne of grace. This throne of grace. This is a place of, of God's divine empowerment. We have, we, uh, we're coming to the throne. 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 It's a place of divine empowerment. Grace is divine empowerment. Grace is divine favor, unmerited favor. Hallelujah. He says you can come to the throne. Throne is a seat of power and the seat of authority. So I'm coming to the place of God's power. I'm coming to the place of God's authority where executive and judicial decisions are being made on my behalf. Laws and legislations going forth. Decrees and orders are being released from the heavens on my behalf. And guess what? As I begin to pray 
through this yesterday, and I begin to declare through this yesterday, and I begin to speak the word of God. I came to the point of victory. I came to the point of singing. I came to the point of praising my God and praising my Lord. Why? Because we the victory had been won. The decree had been released from the heavens. The decree had been released from the throne of God. He can have what he said. He can have what he said. He can have what he prayed for in my son's name. See, you got to pray through until you reach the place of victory. Woo. You got to pray till you reach the place of victory. I'm going to slap, let me slap y'all with this paper. You got to pray till you get to the place of victory, till the decree is released from the throne of heaven. What? That they have the very petition they, they have asked uh, uh, of me. Glory to God. And this throne is the seat of God's power. It is the seat of God's authority. And when God releases it from heaven, then I can decree a thing and it shall be established unto me. I can decree a word. I can speak a thing. I can release a thing. I can release a thing. Until, uh, amen. Uh, amen. And, and then it's going to come forth. Why? Because I'm not speaking of my own will. I'm not speaking of my own will, but I'm speaking by the authority of the throne of grace. I'm at the throne of grace. I'm not at the throne of judgment. I'm at the throne of grace. I wish I had somebody that could shout right there. I'm not at the throne of judgment. I'm not at the throne of judgment. I am at the throne of grace. Come on. Somebody might be at the throne of judgment, but that's not me. I'm at the throne of grace today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, and the throne of grace got the blood of Jesus on it. The throne of grace got the blood of Jesus on it. Yes, it does. The throne of grace got the blood of Jesus that appeases God, that satisfies God. Come on, that puts the wrath of God at rest. Whew. I'm at the throne of grace. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, my father, he's no longer just my God, but he's my father. He's no longer just my God, but he's my father. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's my father. And he says, I'm, it gives the father good pleasure to give the kingdom to his children. It gives, it brings the father good pleasure. Oh, the father is happy about me standing at the throne of grace. The father is pleased with me standing at the throne of grace. Oh, blessings are flowing from the throne of grace. Divine empowerment is, throwing, is flowing from the throne of grace. That which I could not do. That which I could not do in my own strength, I can now do because God what? I'm at the throne of grace because I'm being powered, empowered by God's throne. I'm at the place of victory. This is the throne of victory. You better believe that. Come on, death is defeated at the throne of grace. Sickness and disease, as I was praying, and I was praying, and the word of the Lord began to come up in my spirit. Hallelujah, glory to God, that victory has been released from his throne. Victory has been released from his throne. Pray through until you reach the place of victory. Pray through until you break forth with singing, Zion. Pray through until you break forth in singing and praise. That's when you know it's already done. Come on, you can rest assured it's already done. It's already done because heaven has authorized that thing. He says now, he says, therefore come boldly. I can come confidently at, to the throne of grace. And watch this. And when I come to the throne of grace, I will... I will obtain mercy. Oh, glory to God. I will obtain mercy. Some of us need mercy in our house. Some of us need mercy in our situation. Some of us need mercy in the courts. Some of us need mercy in, the, in, in our health and with the doctors. Some of us need mercy in our finances. Some of us need mercy. Come on, somebody. Some of us need mercy in, on our life. My God. I, listen. Listen. I'm trying to tell you. Come on, God. Come to the throne of grace. Come to the throne of grace. I'm at the throne of grace today. You're at the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus. Oh, my God. That mercy. That mercy. Huh? That mercy may be attained. Come on. The Bible says you're going to receive mercy. Compassion is going to be had on you. Kindness. Goodwill. God said, I'm going to release my goodwill on you, boy. I'm about to release something on you. 
you won't know what happened to you. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. I'm about to release something on you. You ain't going to know what happened. It's God's mercy and it's God's grace. Come on. The Bible says that you may obtain mercy and that you may find grace uh, uh, to help in the time of need. I got help on the way. That's uh, uh, what his name. The comedian, he said, help on the help is on the way. It is on the way. Yes, it is. Come on, somebody. Help is on the way. Come on. The Bible says, he says, you're going to find grace and mercy to help you in the time of need. If you got a time of need, you ought to lift your hands because God's going to meet your need. Uh, I, I'm in a time of need, Lord. I, I'm in a time. I'm in a place where I need you. I'm in a place. Oh, my God. I need help. I need help. And he says, I'm going to show, yeah, Country Wayne, that's right. Help, help, help is on the way. Uh, I need help. And the Bible says that you will find grace. And that grace will flow from the throne of heaven, from the throne of God. And Jesus is seated on that throne. It's the seat of God's power. It's the seat of God's power. Yes, it is. You can find grace in the time of your Need, people of God. I'm in a place of need. I'm in a place of need. And help, yes, help is on the way from the throne of heaven. From the throne of heaven. Hey, glory. I see angels being dispatched. Hallelujah. I see angels going forth. I see the army of the Lord being released on your behalf, on my behalf. Come on. I see the angels of heaven being released to war on your behalf. Glory to God. Go forth and help the heirs of salvation. There is grace flowing from the throne of grace in this time of need. Huh? Now we're going to talk about that throne some more, but you can rest assured that help is on the way. You can rest assured we are standing at the throne of grace. And it's because of the blood of Jesus. It's because of the life of Christ. It's because we have a great high priest. Somebody ought to give God glory this morning to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for the throne of grace. We thank you for the great high priest, Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we praise you right now for everything you've said and done in our spirit this morning. Father, we honor the throne of grace. We honor the finished work of Jesus. And Father, we approach that grace, Father, boldly, Father, confidently, assured, Father, Lord God, that we shall find and obtain mercy and we shall find grace to help in the time of need. Lord, you know every need. You know every need present. You know every need, Father, as this video goes around the world. Father, I thank you. You know every need. Oh, Father, I release grace. Release grace, Father. Release mercy. Father, release the blood of Jesus. Release the host of heavens, Father, to bring forth those needs and that the people of God will know it is because they stand under the throne of grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you and we thank you. Father, I thank you that nothing will circumvent the miracles found.